Welcome back to CivilNet. I'm uh, joined today by fellow Canadian Armenian uh, and head of the uh, the Economy Ministry's Tourism Committee, Sisian Bolasian. Sisian, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Although you're from the wrong uh, city in Canada, but <laughs> I still forgive you. Um, let's dive in. Tell us uh, what uh, Armenia is experiencing a significant tourism boom lately. What what would be the leading factor uh, behind it? And can you tell us a little bit about the numbers? Uh, who's coming mostly and why? Sure. Uh, let's start with the numbers and then we'll get a little bit into the details of the why and the how. Uh, we have the numbers for the first nine months for 2023. Uh, we've had 1,850,000 tourists uh, for the first nine months, which is a 25% increase over 2019. And the reason I'm comparing it to 2019 uh, is because 2019 was the best year we've had in tourism. We actually finished the year uh, in 2019 at about 1.9 million. So, so far in the first nine months, we've almost hit the same target as the entire year uh, for 2019. And when comparing to last year in 2022, we were still sort of post-COVID um, recovery period. Uh, we're up about 49%. Uh, we actually were uh, are the sixth on the UNWTO uh, tourism barometer as well, uh, in, uh, internationally. Uh, we're third in Europe and uh, sixth globally, which is uh, a pretty big number uh, looking at sort of growth. This is growth compared from, from this year compared to 2019. So I think that's something to be proud of as well. Uh, in terms of where they're coming, uh, no surprise, the first three countries have been consistent, uh, I would say, over the last 10 years. Uh, Russia, Georgia, and Iran have always been the top three. Uh, what we're seeing is that, obviously, based on the geopolitical situation, uh, we have a lot more uh, Russians coming currently. Uh, about 50%, 50 51% of our tourists this year alone have been from Russia, where in the past, typically, that number was about 30 to 35%. Uh, so there's a massive increase increase and we know the reasons. Uh, followed by Georgia. Georgia's, Georgia's been sort of pretty stable uh, over the years, followed by Iran. Uh, the percentage of tourists from Iran, we're seeing it decrease a little bit based on sort of uh, the value of uh, the money that they have as well. It's sort of expensive for them to travel as well, but they're still third on the list. Uh, that's followed by our U.S. diasporans, uh, which for me is still not enough. I'd like more from the U.S. diasporan uh, uh, perspective, uh, followed by um, uh, Germany and France. Uh, we see a massive increase from Dubai over the past year, and uh, that is uh, not a shock to us because we've been actually been promoting Armenia quite heavily in uh, the UAE uh, since last year to also help break the seasonality a little bit uh, because uh, people from Dubai love the snow. They want to go explore uh, different countries and seasons and and Armenia is a quick getaway for them, very easy to get to. So they, they love to come to Armenia as well. Uh, that's in terms of sort of the numbers and who's coming. And the why I touched on a little bit, obviously the Russian tourists coming uh, has a massive impact on that. Uh, but also uh, the UAE market, there's new, um, uh, a new target country that we're growing, uh, but also Italy, even though they're not on our top 10 list yet, uh, we have direct flights uh, through Vizier to three destinations, Venice, Rome, and Milan from Yerevan, which is actually um, helping Armenia become more connected to Europe as well. So we have some new destinations that we're working on. Uh, obviously, the new flights definitely very much help. Uh, and um, I mean, we're, we're continuing to sort of promote Armenia in those, the, those directions to make sure that we're sort of becoming top of mind slowly. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, the, the direct flights are interesting to me. Um, I find like we have a lot of locations, for example, like Poland, right? With Lot, we have direct flights. I think it's every two days, every three days. Um, I notice also Air Baltic has started. Uh, I'm sad that the Lithuania ones uh, with Wizz Air are discontinued. I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to start up again. But we have um, people who are, let's say, more culturally similar to us, and um, they have rising incomes in those countries. Um, those could be, I, I mean, I'm wondering why there's, uh, or, or unless there's, there's a plan for this, but to expand outreach to these countries who already have the existing connections, they just don't know about us or haven't really considered it being an option. Uh, I mean, when we have, we're, we actually just wrote our strategy for the next five years and it's going to go to the government for approval soon. But when it comes to sort of looking at countries and how we go about attracting them to Armenia, 
there's a little bit of a method to the madness. So we look at obviously in the past what's happened, um, how likely are they to consider Armenia, how much do they already know about Armenia. It's a little bit difficult to start from zero. Mm -hmm. uh, you brought up Lot as an example. Lot usually for us mainly works as a hub, a connection point to Armenia. So we don't have a lot of people from Poland coming to Armenia. A lot of people use Lot Airlines to go through Poland to Armenia. Uh, and so based on that, again, because we have um, a limited amount of funding when it comes to our marketing dollars, we have to be sort of smart in the way we spend it. So we try not to go in too many different countries and split up whatever funding we have in too many tiny places because then we won't get the results that we need. And so we try to focus on the key target markets that we have, some of them I already mentioned, and to make sure we put the efforts specifically in those areas to make sure that we actually get the return on our investment as well. Yeah, it makes sense. Tell us about the uh, the methodology, the numbers, because a lot of the criticism or pushback that we get, which there's always going to be some criticism and pushback, but it's that, you know, if it weren't for the, for all the Russians coming, fleeing, you know, the war over there, uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't have such interesting numbers or so on. Can you tell us a little bit about the methodology, how, how they're counted? How do you know that they're tourists and not, for example, uh, IT people who are just coming in and just staying here for nine months or a year or so on. It's already, well, yeah, it's already almost been two years as of recording this, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, so one thing I want to start off by saying, and yes, that criticism I hear all the time. Uh, one thing I want to start off by, by saying is that Armenia counts its tourists the same way every other country counts its tourists. So if we're doing it wrong, everybody else in the world is doing it wrong. And so we're compelling, comparing apples to apples anyway. Uh, so I just want to start off with that. And the way it's counted, it's based on the UNWTO standard, the UN World Tr uh, Tourism Organization. They set the standard of how a tourist gets count counted and what who makes up a tourist. And that is usually a tourist that's a person that stays more than 24 hours in a country in less than a year. Uh, they can't be working in the country, they can't be registered in the country, they can't be a resident of the country. And so that I know it leaves quite a bit of you know, space in between to decide who that can be. Uh, but that's the same way every other country counts their tourists. So it's not like we're comparing apples to oranges. So if my numbers seem uh, high and other countries' numbers seem high is because we're all counting the same way. And obviously with the geopolitical situation happening in Russia, a lot of countries are seeing the results the same way we are, right? So we're seeing a lot of tourists from Russia, same th same way from Georgia. Uh, Georgians are seeing it, same same way Europe in European countries will see it. Yeah, Serbia, it's, for example. Yeah, yeah, so it's the same. We're all sort of counting it the same way, yeah. uh, and so we're not doing it any different than any other country. So that's important, very much important to note. Uh, and tourism is a is a industry that is very much affected by every little thing that happens around us. We saw what happened with COVID. We see what happens with with geopolitical situations, with wars, etc. Um, but that's the hand that we are given. And regardless of the reason why they're coming, they are coming, they are spending, they are uh, going and seeing different attractions outside of Yerevan, inside Yerevan, they are staying here, they are paying, uh, they're staying in hotels and paying rent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and if it's less than a year, um, it, they sort of act like a tourist potentially, maybe a yeah. longer term that you would like to. Yeah. Uh, but the longer they stay in Spain, spend money as, as long as it's less than a year, I'm okay with yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, who cares? They're here, they're eating our food, drinking they're, our wine, spending money. Yeah, and, and yeah. honestly, they also authentically promote Armenia, right? Yeah, like on true. their own channels and social media. And the longer they stay, um, they actually get very much a better feel of what Armenia is about. And even through their own channels, they very much promote Armenia yeah. um, because what we, we typically see, and even with the Russians, a lot of them are coming for the first time. They've, these are not, you know, may not be repeat customers, uh, let's put it. They've, they've come to Armenia for the very first time and they're pleasantly surprised by sort of yeah. what they're seeing. And when they start talking about that, their friends see it, of course, and their friends get interested and why not if they have to choose a place to go and visit I'd, I'd like to be top of mind for sure what uh, what do you make of the, the the invasion of Artsakh what what impact do you think it's going to have short term well you've probably already, already seen some short term impacts but longer term I mean is this dissuading tourism is I mean we were worried like the last the September fighting from last year that was kind of the same thing you had a couple cancellations you had a little blip and then it just kind of started picking back up again. Do you foresee the same happening with uh, with this year or what's your take? I mean, every time something uh, like that happens, obviously very much uh, affects the Armenian community as a whole, affects the country as a whole. 
Um, but it's important that we have the right messaging out there um, because what's with, with what's happening um, in Armenia and Nagorno Karabakh, it's the, the messaging is they they sort of connect the two together. Uh, as an example, uh, we were in Topraza Paris. It's a tourism expo uh, last week. And nice thing about France is many of the French know about Armenia, so they don't come up to our booth and going, "Where's Armenia? What's up, Armenia?" Uh, and and they the first thing they say is, "We're so sorry about what's happening in Armenia." And you know, I have to like mm, tell them it's not happening in the Republic of Armenia. It's it's important for them to be uh, to understand the difference. Um, and of course, Armenia is very much affected. Um, but so it's imp important for, for people to understand the difference. And so when they, they go, it's happening in the Republic of Armenia and automatically they see images of, you know, people fleeing or potentially war or, you know, um, acts of violence, they automatically assume the Republic of Armenia is unsafe and, yeah. and things are, are bad in the Republic of Armenia. Uh, and so that's hard to see. And, uh, and and for us, every time we talk about Armenia and promoting Armenia, uh, we talk about the safety of the country and we talk about how safe Armenia is. We talk about how Yerevan was named as one of the safest cities in the world. The this rankings year. came out the yesterday. <clears throat> you saw them? Yeah. Of course, it's, and 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 there's different rankings, and consistently Armenia and Yerevan are on the list yeah. as one of the. We're in the places. top nine. Yet. We are number nine on the planet yesterday in so, terms of safety. Exactly. So uh, again, there is that was from the country per perspective. Yerevan was on a, from a city perspective this past year as well. So there's always different rankings, and Armenia is always on the top of the list, mm -hmm. and that's very important to note. And even as a woman uh, living in Armenia or a, a woman that would be traveling alone, Armenia is definitely a destination that they should consider. Yeah. And I always talk about this. And you mentioned uh, me coming from Canada. Um, I've lived in Canada for 23 years uh, or so. I've I've never felt safer than anywhere in Armenia. Like yeah. for me, Armenia is uh, so comfortable. I don't have to worry about you know being out alone late at night or what I'm doing. And yeah. that's important. And if, especially if you're a woman traveling by yourself, that's definitely a pro on the list of why you should come to Armenia. Yeah. Sure. But of course, the the conversation of safety and security are two different things. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, we we it's it, in from a tourism perspective, tourism committee perspective, that's not in my hands specifically. Yeah. Uh, we do the best we can with the situation that we have, and it's important. The messaging is important, and we continue to stand by the fact that the Republic of Armenia is safe, and yeah. uh, we still are, still are welcoming tourists every single day. Yeah, I think that there's a. Really, we've talked about this privately many times, right? Like from a branding perspective, I mean, you know, you know, I work in advertising and, and marketing and I always think like you can always spin as much as physically possible. And I think for Armenians, it's really important to do that, right? I think like even from a from a national security perspective, the brand of the country really matters. And so there's all these, um, there's, there's a lot of moral questions that we're facing that we haven't, we're not used to facing, but we need to, we need to confront these like, you know, as you mentioned, uh, some festivals have been canceled because of the violence. Um, and I remember after the 2020 war, um, there was the, the Yerevan, uh, the first Yerevan, uh, uh, what's it called? Wine days. Yeah. Yerevan wine days. Right. And there was a lot of arguments, you know, that we're still, we're still mourning our dead. Uh, you're going to be partying in the streets. But the flip side to that is that number one, these are local producers who've been already punished for two years of COVID. A lot of these guys are veterans or family members of veterans. There were booths of veterans there, either winemaking or mm -hmm. selling crafts or raising money for their fellow veterans. And I think like part of Armenia's brand of national survival should be this act of defiance that every celebration mm -hmm. that we have, every time there's a child born in this country, every time we do winemaking, which we've been doing in an unbroken line for 6,000 years until today, we're eating our food, we're promoting our culture is an act of, of resistance to the enemy, right? It's, it's, it is a victory in and of itself. Um, so I wanted to ask you specifically on this, especially since I don't like to compare us too much to Georgia, but it is an interesting kind of, uh, you know, because they have a lot of connections to Europe as well. And there's a lot of people when I say I live in Armenia, they go, well, I've, I've been to Georgia, but I haven't seen Armenia. You know, we have the mountains, they have the mountains, we have the winemaking, they have the winemaking, we have the food, they have the food. So uh, not to denigrate Georgia in any way at all, it's a fantastic country, but what what's our unique brand that really makes us stand out that you think that this needs to be pushed as 
the Armenian story, both linked to, you know, like I said, national security, but also the brand of the country to grow tourism, to grow the economy and so on. Um, so when it comes to the brand, um, the one we currently have is the one that we are positioning ourselves at, and it's Armenia, the hidden track. Uh, and there was a lot of pushback when we first launched it, um, because people thought hidden had a negative connotation to it. On the flip side, for me, it was very much uh, a mysterious uh, connotation, as if this is a place that it's undiscovered, unexplored. There's definitely a surprise element. And that's what we see with a lot of the tourists that come here. They may not have known about us. They may not have considered us. But when they come here, they're pleasantly surprised by the entire country. And I can't um, summarize it in any other word than, unfortunately, I have to say vibe. It's like a vibe in yeah. the country that it's the feeling, it's the people, it's the it's the entire atmosphere that you feel what, what, when you're here. Uh, like I said, or like you said, the mountains may be similar to many other countries, the food may be similar, the uh, nature might be similar, but um, that feeling that you get here um, is like no other. We have many um, uh, tourists that come here with no ties to Armenia, and they say, oh, it feels like home, it feels like family, it feels like I'm amongst my own. And that's sort of the welcoming feeling that uh, Armenians offer. And that hidden track um, we are continually talking about and promoting to, con to have this consistent brand where people can start um, uh, attaching it to Armenia. So then when we say Armenia, they don't say Romania, we're like, no, no, Armenia. They're like Albania, and they're like, no, no, Armenia. So it's, it's uh, we, we, we don't have brand awareness. Um, people don't know us. People don't know about this tiny country in the Caucasus. Uh, and so we need to have this consistent messaging that we can talk about all the time in any country we go to. Um, and that surprise element is what I, I get told about all the time about, by people that are here for the first time. And they come here once and they sort of feel it and they, they want to come back. Um, and that sort of goes to, for the diasporans too, that have never been to Armenia. We have the majority of our diasporans that have never come to Armenia, about 60-70%, which for me is a little sad. Um, but if we can hook him and bring him in for once, uh, they fall in love and they keep coming back. And uh, for me, sort of the diasporan uh, network is sort of that low-hanging fruit that I don't have to tell them where Armenia is on a map. At least they know that much. Uh, they might not know what there is to do in Armenia because they might think of Armenia as just churches and monasteries and nothing else. So there's yeah. a little bit of education that has to happen of like, instead of that week down south, south in Mexico, come to Armenia and you'll get to experience all of this. The nightlife, the food, the uh, hiking and the adventure activities that you can do at a much affordable price that you would be able to yeah. do it in the US that they're like, oh, you, you can you could do a hot air balloon ride, or you can do paraglidding, or you can do whitewater rafting, mm -hmm. or you can do zip lining, or camping, know, glamping, glamping, whatever like, lovely. Oh, I didn't know Armenia had any of those things. Yeah. Uh, and so it's important for us to show people, um, even though we're a tiny country, it's actually for me, it's one, it's a, it's quite a, a positive thing, because in a short amount of time, you can cover a bunch of thing in the country yeah. and from region to region you go from desert like regions to like lush forests and that the the difference the stark difference i think is quite interesting um for tourists in general yeah my favorite part is the the tunnel that goes into uh, right to dilijan so you you're, you go from one country to another you come out the tunnel and you're like wow i'm in switzerland right exactly um Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you joining us. Uh, Sisyan, can you uh, tell the audience where they can follow you, they can keep up with your activities and uh, and stay informed up to date on what there is to do in Armenia? Of course. Um, we have the same sort of website, Instagram, Facebook, everything under armenia.travel. Um, we have information about everything you can do, see, eat, experience in Armenia. Uh, and we always talk about sort of the most interesting things happening, like we have a hot air balloon festival this weekend. Um, so there's always a bunch of things happening, cool things happening, fun things happening. And yeah, I think it's important, especially for our diasporans to be engaged uh, in Armenia. So please follow. <laughs> 
Thanks again for joining us on Civil Net, and uh, thanks again, Sisyon. Thank you.